Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Hello everyone. In this lesson we are going to present the Angular NG4 core directive. We have here several course cards displayed and we have here a certain level of repetition in the template. We have these free tags here and we are adding here, for example, the exact same custom event handler. It would be much better to simply loop through a list of courses and apply only one course tag in our template, especially because our data is already available in an array. This would also simplify here our application component. So let's start refactoring this and use the ng4 directive for presenting our list of courses. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to make the courses array available here. We are going to make available to the template not only these free courses, but we are actually going to present the complete list of courses. So imagine what it would be if here we would have somewhere between uh, 7 and 10 courses here in this template. It would be very repetitive. Let's then continue to refactor here our component. We have added here a variable called courses, which contains the complete courses list. And we can now go ahead and remove these free variables that we were using here. So we are no longer going to refer to the courses one by one with separate member variables. Instead, what we're going to do is we are going to use the Angular ng4 structural directive in order to loop through the list of courses and here is the syntax for ng4 we are going to start here with the star this is a shorthand syntax for structural directives which we will be covering in detail later in this course a structural directive such as the name implies allows us to change the structure of the page based here on a javascript expression so in this case we want to pass in here an expression that will loop through a list of courses the looping expression is identical to plain javascript this is the same expression that we would use when looping through a collection in TypeScript. ng4 is going to create a local course loop variable that is going to contain each of the courses being looped. Now we can take this variable here and we can pass it as the input of the course card custom HTML element. Let's then see ng4 in action. After refreshing the application, if we scroll down, we are going to see that not only we have here the first three cards, but notice here, there are more cards available. So all the elements of the courses array are being displayed on the screen. So we have here a directive that allows us to generate new components by looping through a data array available at the level of our component. If we click into the courses array available on the DB data file, so this is just some test data that we are using to build our program, we are going to see that indeed all the courses in this file are being displayed here on the screen. Besides the core iteration functionality, ng4 also comes with some additional features. Let's start with the first auxiliary feature, which is going to be the index feature. So let's say that we want to add here a number to the course. We would like to number the courses from one up until the last sequential number of the course. We can do that very easily in the following way. We are going to add here a semicolon after the let of syntax and we are going to access here the index built-in variable that is provided by the ng4 directive. And we are actually going to rename it so that we can use it easily here in our template. We are going to pass in here an alternative name to our index which is simply going to be called the e variable. Now we need to somehow pass the current index of the card to the course card itself and we're going to do that using here a new input parameter that we are about to create we are going to call this index parameter card index and we're going to pass it the value e plus one because e is zero based e starts at zero one two etc so we are adding here plus one if we move here into the card we are going to create here another input we are going to call it 
card index like we did in the previous template and we're going to declare it as being of type number. Next, we are going to go here to our template and just before here the course description, we are going to add here the card index, we are going to append here a space and we are going to concatenate here the course description. If we reload this, we are going to see that indeed we have here the numerical value 1, 2, 3, etc all the way up until 10. NG4 also provides us a couple of extra features, so not only we have here access to the index of the current element that is being looped, but we also have access to the information if this element is the first element on the list or not. So first is a variable provided by NG4 that will be true only for the case of the first card and we can rename it using the as syntax to something like for example is first. We can now use is first to add a special style here to the first card of the list for example. In order to add a style to the first course card of the list we are going to be using the following template syntax. We are going to continue to use the angular input property syntax in square braces and we are going to access the class variable of this DOM element. The class property is going to contain the list of CSS classes applied to this HTML element. So we are going to be adding here to the list of CSS classes of this element the class is-first. This is a CSS class that is going to add here a top border only to the first card of the list. The class is available here under the source assets folder, we have here a styles.css file and if we open this file we are going to see that we have here a course card.isfirst CSS class that is applying here a couple of simple styles to our first card of the list. Using this class we can now use it here at the level of the template, we are going to say that we want to apply the is first class in all cases of the list. So we have to provide here a boolean expression that is going to be true if we want to apply the is first CSS class to the course card and it should be false if we don't want to add this class to the element. If we try this out now we are going to see that the class is first is being added to all the elements in the list. Instead of applying the CSS class to all the elements in the list we would like instead to apply this only to the first element. So for that we are going to use the is first boolean variable that we have available here and now this top border is only visible for the first card in the list. In a very similar way to the first variable we also have access to a last boolean variable and this variable works in a very similar way to is first. So let's apply here a class called is last and this class will only be applied to the last element of our list. So it's very similar to the CSS that we have here but we are applying a bottom border this time around. So if we try this out we can see that is first is still being applied here but if we now scroll down here to the bottom of the list, we are going to see that here at the end we have here the last card course with the bottom border and if we inspect the card element here using the Chrome Dev tools, we are going to see that indeed this course card here has a CSS class is last. In a very similar way to the first and last variables, we also have an even and odd variable pair. Let's quickly declare here the variables. So first we are going to declare even as is even and then we are going to declare odd as is odd. Now we have these two variables available and we can apply them here to our template in a very similar way. So we have a CSS class is even that is only going to be applied if the is even variable is set to true and the equivalent is going to be done for the CSS is odd that is only going to be applied to an element if the element is odd. So these two classes is even and is odd are simply going to apply a different color background to each of the cards. Let's have a look at the CSS classes in action. If we refresh the application we can see that the even elements of our list have a light grey background while the odd elements have here a light cyan background. 
and this matches the styles that we have here. As we can see, even elements are light grey and odd elements are light cyan, just like we see here on the screen. And with this, we have covered all the auxiliary features of NG4. Let's now cover another Angular Core Directive. We are going to see how can we add or remove conditionally certain elements from the page. We are going to be doing that using the ng if core directive. In this lesson we are going to talk about a new structural directive in Angular Core. This is the ng if directive that is useful for conditionally displaying or hiding from the user certain parts of the page. Let's give a concrete example for this very commonly used functionality. For example, here at the level of our course card, we can see that every course that we are displaying here has an image. And this is because here in our DB data file, all the courses belonging to this array have an icon URL property that is being used here to display the image. Now imagine what would happen if one of these courses would not have here an icon URL property. Let's remove the icon URL property from the first course and reload the application. And now take a look at what happens. We have here the browser symbol for a broken image. And we have here an alternative text for the image. The reason why we are getting displayed here this text with a broken image is because we are defining here an alt property in our course card component and this contains the text being displayed. Then this broken image that we see here, this is standard browser functionality. The browser will display this whenever the source property is not correctly filled in. What we would like to do in this situation is instead of displaying here this broken image, we would prefer to hide the image tag completely and replace it with something else. And this would happen depending on the presence of the icon URL property. The expression that we pass to ng if works in the following way. If the expression is evaluated to true, then we are going to see that the element onto which we are applying ng if, in this case the image, will still be present on the screen. But if this expression evaluates to false instead, then the image is going to get hidden. As we can see, the image is no longer present. And if we inspect here our application, we are going to see that not only the image is hidden, but it was instead completely removed from the page. So there is no hidden HTML element here that is still present on the page hidden with CSS. What happens here with ng if is that the content is completely removed from the DOM from the page itself. Notice that we don't have to pass in the values true or false to ng if. We can instead pass any JavaScript expression. We can also pass here a reference to course.iconurl, which is a string and not a boolean, and it can potentially be undefined. But even though this is a string and not a boolean, the ng if structural directive is going to coerce this value into a boolean. So in this case, the value undefined of this first Angular Core Deep Dive course is going to cause the image to be hidden. So this expression here, in the case of this course card, is getting evaluated to false because icon URL is undefined. And for all other courses in the list, because we have an icon URL property defined, this ng if expression is going to be evaluated to true, and so the image will be displayed on the card. We don't have to pass only booleans or strings to ng if, we could potentially pass an object, and if the object is undefined, then it would be evaluated to false. Any other object would be evaluated to true. We can also pass in here a function call. For example, we can create here a new method called is image visible. This method needs to be available here at the level of our component. And from here, we can return a boolean to the template, indicating if the image should be visible or not. In this case, we are going to say that the image is visible if the course property is defined and if the course property has an icon URL property also defined. So as you can see, if we reload here the page, we can see that the same logic is still working as expected. Let's give another example of how to use ng if. Let's say that we have here in our list of courses an undefined object here at the beginning. 
So by some reason, this data here is not available, but it was accidentally passed on to our view. Let's see what problem would this cause. So now if we reload the application, we can see that it looks like everything is broken now. And if we check here on the console, we have here the error message cannot read property description of undefined. And here is the name of the component that is causing the issue. It's the course card component. And we can see that it's this expression here, course.description, that is causing the problem to occur. So the problem is that we are passing in the value undefined here to the input course. And then this value is being accessed here using the standard JavaScript dot notation for accessing properties. Course is undefined, so course.description is going to cause this error here. One way of avoiding this situation would be to use what we call the Elvis operator. We simply add here a question mark, evaluation of the property, and then we're going to see that somehow the results are slightly different. We have here a different error message. Now the problem is here at the level of the long description property. So we can fix that. And now we have here a running program where we have here an initial card that is displaying incorrect values, but still at least the program is not crashing. And we have here our core deep dive where the image is absent because the icon URL property is undefined. And here we have the other cards that are working correctly. Now, what we would like to do here is to avoid the use of the Elvis operator in multiple places of the template, because if the course is not available, then it really doesn't make sense to try to display the course card. So what we're going to do here is we are going to guard against this error scenario by using the ngif directive. Let's apply here ngif and let's simply pass it the course object. If the course object is already defined, then the card is going to be displayed. On the other hand, if the course object is not available, then due to the ngif directive, this whole section here is going to get hidden and we will no longer see here this incorrect result. Let's have a look at this in action. After refreshing the application, we can see that now that initial undefined card has been hidden and we are instead displaying directly the second element of the array, the Angular Core Deep Dive course, as expected. So as we can see, by adding here ngif at the level of the outer container of our component, we have avoided the use here of the Elvis operator to avoid undefined errors. Another commonly used feature of ngif is an else clause. So let's say that we don't have here an image to display to the user, but we would like to show to the user something else, such as, for example, a small amount of text that says that no image is available. We can do that by using here an else clause. We simply add here an else. And then we need to pass in here a reference to a template block that is going to contain our message. So let's create here a template block. We are going to do that using ng template and we are going to give this template block a name. We are going to call it no image. So we are using here the template reference hash syntax that we have seen before. We're going to take here our message and we are going to paste it here inside the template block. Now we are going to take this template reference no image and we're going to add it here in our else clause. Let's now quickly see this logic in action. We are going to refresh the application and we're going to see that we have here the no image is available message displayed on the screen, but only in the case of the first card where no image is available. In the remainder of the cards, we are correctly displaying the image as expected. And with this, we have covered ngif, which is one of the most commonly used directives in Angular. Next, we are going to talk about the ng class and ng style directives that we are going to be using for styling our Angular components. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also, check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.